One technology that I have seen used effectively is the smart board. The particular lesson was in algebra, and therefore it was very heavy with examples of math equations. Not being the best math student on the planet, these examples were crucial for me to understand what was going on. I often referred to the teacher's examples while studying for quizzes and tests. This is how I got by. What the smart board did was great because the instructor was able to save the notes as a PDF in which they would later share with the class. It was exactly the same as the example shown in the Teaching Physics YouTube video provided for this lesson. As a student, I would still feverishly take notes of everything in class, but didn't need to worry if something got erased prematurely. In the past, instructors have often moved through lessons very quickly before I could get a grasp of how something worked. Therefore, before I could finish my notes, oftentimes an instructor had already moved on. Thanks to the smart board, I didn't really have to worry about this anymore. In an opinion article by Lee Spire, she describes the smart board as useful and more efficient than ever before, but described the functionality of saving and distributing classroom materials as a convenience, not a breakthrough. While I agree that the usability may not be a breakthrough, I think small steps in education can make a huge impact and difference. And as a result of the smart board's ingenuity, I felt like I had great study notes and ultimately did better on my exams. I would use the smart board in a similar way for my own lesson. I've used it with success in presenting information to a board of colleagues in the past, as well as brainstorming ideas. The ability to save the board and send it out electronically often frees the room up from taking notes. People are more willing to be engaged in the conversation when they don't feel an urge to write down everything being said. That's what the smart board is for. It also enables the presenter to be out and open in front of their audience, instead of being trapped behind a podium or behind the computer to advance a slide. The technology I have seen used ineffectively is the dreaded PowerPoint. Most cases I've seen PowerPoint used badly is in science classes. This is often because of too much information crammed into each slide. It just bogs the user down. As a student, you're really not sure what is critical to know for a test versus what is just there. In fact, many students just copy everything down. According to a report that explores whether PowerPoint helps or hinders learning, it's reported that 82% of students said they always, almost always, or usually copy the information on the slides. Is this a good trend? I learn the best when I reiterate someone else's thoughts through my own understanding, not copy them verbatim. More often than not, they are simply poorly designed. Not necessarily the program's fault, but the creator's. They don't engage, but rather prompt students to go into note-taking mode. And this is bad. This often brings students to drift in and out of the lecture. Mary Ellen Weimer notes that the environment which PowerPoint works is questionable as a thriving learning environment. She says, the lights are partially dimmed and the seats arranged so that everyone focuses on the screen. Those aren't features that foster the vibrant exchange of ideas. Some issues and concerns that technology presents in the classroom is that first and foremost, it isn't always the answer. Some classroom settings will benefit from it more than others. For example, I see the field of mathematics benefiting more from the smart board technology than, say, English literature. Also, technology should not be made the focal point of instruction. If that happens, instruction takes a back seat to the subject being taught. Instructors and students should never be more concerned with the technology in use than the subject of study. In an article discussing problems with technology in the classroom, this is mentioned as a source of distraction. Instead of being a learning tool, other services such as internet connectivity and text messaging have the ability to get students' mind off of learning the subject. Technology also often requires money, let's face it. Many cutting edge products are expensive and involve training to truly be effective learning tools. 
An article titled Five Problems with Technology in the Classrooms states that new hires may be necessary for teaching students how to use the newer digital media, yet another expense to the school. Some possible solutions are to investigate a technology you want to implement in the classroom very, very thoroughly. How will it be used? Do you really need it? How will it enhance the learning experience? Whatever your answers to these questions are, get excited about it. Once a conclusion is made and a technological piece is chosen, get trained. You will need to know this very well in order for it to work at all.